144. A solution is 0.15 molarity in both PB2 plus and AG plus. If Cl minus is added to this solution, what is the concentration of the silver, the AG plus, when PBCl2 begins to precipitate? Okay, so here we go. We're talking about precipitation, right? So that means that things are going to start turning into a solid, and that has to do with solubility products, so KSP. So the first thing that we had to do is go to the back of the book to find out what the two KSP values are for what they're talking about here. Now, they were nice. They gave you one compound. So here is the KSP value for PBCL2. It's 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. But what would be the other compound? Now, they did say that Cl minus was added to the solution. So the Cl minus, some of the chloride ion is going to hook up with the PB2 plus. That's why you get PBCl2. But some of the Cl minus is going to hook up with the Ag plus, And that's the other compound. So you have two compounds that are technically being formed in this question, the PBCl2 and the AgCl. Now, if we look at these K values, one is 10 to the negative 10th and one is 10 to the negative fifth. Now, in general, generally the largest of the KSP values, those are going to be the ones that precipitate out first because their KSP values are just higher. And they did give us that little hint. They said that PBCL2 is going to begin to precipitate first, right? So we're going to use this information for the PBCL2. Now, between AGCL and PBCL2, are there anything that's in common? Is there an ion that is common? Yeah, it's the chlorine, the Cl minus. This is acting as a common ion. Remember, common ions are ions that are the same in both equations. So we're going to basically use that idea and find out what the common molarity is. So for now, we're just going to hang tight with AGCL. We're going to work with the PBCL too, because they did tell us that that was going to precipitate out first, right? Begins to precipitate. So with any KSP equation, we need to write the balanced equation, right? So PBCL2, that's a solid. This comes to equilibrium, double arrow, between the two ions. PB2 plus, Cl minus, they gave us the charges, so thank you very much for that. And since there are charges, I know that that's aqueous. AQ, AQ. Let's just make sure that this equation is balanced. There's two chlorines, so I just have to put a two in front of here, but now we're good. Okay. So they're saying that a solution was 0.15 molarity in PB2 plus and AG plus. So we know that the concentration of the PB was. 0.15 molarity. So that's going to go over here. That was my initial concentration. Now, we might actually have to do an ice table here. Fingers crossed. We have to check for the 5% rule because generally we can bypass that by just saying this is X and solving. But I noticed that this KSP is like right at the cusp. It's like 10 to the negative fifth. So it's not too big and it's not too small, but I still should check to see if I can neglect those X's. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do an ice table. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can get away from not doing the uh, ice table. I mean, the... um the quadratic equation. Solids, remember, we don't care. So for equilibrium purposes, we get rid of that. We start off with zero, right? Now, technically, this would be plus x because I have one. There's a two here, so I'm just going to say plus two x. 
And then the equilibrium would be 0.15 plus x and then 2x. Okay, so now let's pull in the KSP equation, which is this one right here. The general formula is KSP equals products raised to the coefficients. So we got KSP equals concentration of PB2 plus times a concentration of Cl minus. And we're going to square the Cl minus because it's raised to the second. There was only one for the PB, so I can put that there, but I don't have to. The Cl2 uh, minus is going to be 2x, and PB2 plus is going to be this, right? 0 0.15 plus x. KSP is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. And let's see if we can get rid of that change. Remember, we're going to say that since we started with, you know, the 0.15, this addition is probably so small that you're barely going to notice it. And generally, at the end of the day, you're probably going to end up with 0.15. So let's just get rid of this, do the math, and hopefully we get uh, we, we can bypass the 5% rule. So let's let's start it off. 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth equals, we have, let's see, 2x, that's squared, and then we have 0 0.15. Let's do 2x squared, right? 2x squared is just 2x times 2x, where 2 times 2 is 4. x times x, you have 2x's, so that's x to the second. So I'm just going to get rid of 2x squared, and I'm just going to say that this whole thing is 4x squared. Now, just do the math. 0.15 times 4 is, let's see, 0. 0.6. So 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth equals 0.6x squared. Let's divide by 0.6. That gets rid of that. We're almost at the finish line. 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth divided by 0.6. I get, and maybe I will just bring this a little bit up just so I have more work or more room. I get 2.667, if I'm just rounding off a little bit here, times 10 to the negative fifth equals x squared. So take the square root. And now we have x equals, um, this divided by, yeah, we'll do square root 2.667 times 10 to the negative fifth. And I get, 5.16 times 10 to the negative third, and that's a molarity. Okay, so now let's just run through the 5% rule. Remember, 5% rule is take your answer that you got, so the 5.16 times 10 to the negative third, and divide it by your initial concentration, which was 0.15, this is kind of, kind of cutting it close. And I'm just going to scratch this molarity for two seconds. And I'm just going to say I'm going to times it by 100. If this answer is five or less, we were able to get rid of that, you know, plus X. And we can carry on with our answer. Oh, boy. This is scaring me. 5.16 times 10 to the negative third divided by 0.15 times 100. Whew, okay. 3.44. We are good. So. Let's just get rid of this work. I'm going to bring this back to molarity. That was, that was a good, good thing on our part. Okay. But now remember, we want to find that common eye on CL minus. So the CL minus was stated as a 2x. So I do have to come back and state that, okay, the x was 5.16 times 10 to the negative third. I'm just going to do two times that value. So two times 5.16 times 10 to the negative third. I get 0 0.01032 molarity. 
Okay, let's box this answer off. And that's what we're going to use for the next part. So pause the video if you need to. Um, but all of this is gone bye bye because we're now going to set up for our next balanced equation. So now we did all the work for the PBCL2. Now we just have to do work for the AGCL. So let's go for it. So I can basically get rid of this. I could get rid of this information and now move on to this. Okay, so let's see, AGCL. That's a solid. This is coming to equilibrium with AG plus, plus CO minus. Both charges, so that's aqueous, AQAQ. AQ. Looks like it's balanced to me, thank goodness. And now the concentration of the Cl minus is that's starting off. So 0 0.01032. So I'm just going to write that underneath 0 0.01032. Now, since we have a common ion, which is what the Cl minus was 0 0.01032 molarity, we want to find out what is that silver concentration. Now, some of you might say, well, wait a minute, they gave me an answer right for the AG plus. But at this point, if you are being, you know, affected by a common ion, the concentration is basically only going to be dependent on the concentration of the other ion. So in this case, I'm not just going to say that I have 0 0.15 molarity because we want to know what the precipitation is based off of this common ion. So in this case, I'm going to label this as X. I don't know what that concentration is. This is the total concentration, but I don't know what the actual concentration needed for precipitation. So we're going to solve for X, AKA AG plus. Um, I don't know why I got rid of the, uh, the KSP equation, but it's here again, right here. And let's just, do it for R's KSP equals concentration of AG plus times the concentration of CL minus. No need to raise any to the exponent because they both are a one to one. So we're good with that. AG plus is going to be X. CL minus is 0 0.01032. And the KSP is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. Now, for all of you that are asking, why didn't I do an ice table for this when I did an ice table before? Because I looked at this value, 10 to the negative 10th. That's very small. That means that, like, without a doubt, the 5% rule is going to work and you don't even have to check it. We're going to be definitely over 5%, uh, definitely under 5%. So I can just skip that, that point. You can always do the ice table just to see but you will get a percentage that's less than five. So 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th equals X times 0 0.01032. Let's solve for X. We're almost at the finish line, 0 0.01032, 0 0.01032. So get rid of that. We get X equals 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th divided by 0 0.01032. And I'll say 1.6 times 10 to the negative eighth, and that's molarity. And then just remember, go back to the question, what's that concentration? So when the PBCL2 starts to precipitate, the AG concentration is only X. Right? That's what we said it was here. So it would just be 1.6 times 10 to the negative eighth molarity. And as you can see, it does not match the full concentration. So there you go. It's much less. Okie dokie. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And 
I will see you all in later lessons. Okay, bye-bye.